this is a Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The news edited by Jay Ogaraj and read by Lavani Vijay Tunga. First, we take a look at the headlines. The President calls for a long-term plan to advance Sri Lanka's energy sector transformation. Singaporean team in Colombo to study immigration system in Sri Lanka. The Prime Minister issues clarification on the presidential election. The government focuses on addressing issues faced by Grama Niladari officers. Social security benefit introduced for all workers over the age of 55. 2023 advanced level examination results to be released before Monday. All schools to function as normal in the next two days. In news overseas, North Korea sending balloons carrying trash to South Korea. And in sports news, Sri Lankan under-19 table tennis team creates history with a gold. Those are the headlines and now let's move to the details of the local news. President Ranil Vikramasinghe has called on all stakeholders, including the private sector investors, to support and develop a long-term plan for advancing Sri Lanka's energy sector transformation and promoting green growth efforts. The President stated this while addressing a roundtable discussion, the President's media division reported. President's senior advisor on national security and chief of state Presidential staff Sagala Ratnayaka has advised the relevant officials to find possible solutions to the problems in the Grama Niladari service while ensuring that no conflicts arise with other public services. He emphasized the importance of discussing existing issues thoroughly and reaching a common agreement. This directive was given during a meeting held at the Presidential Secretariat on Tuesday involving officials of the Gramaniladari trade unions and the related line institutions, the BMD reported. There was an extensive discussion regarding the issues related to Gramaniladari service constitution and the problems that have arisen concerning the salary scale, the statement said. The Gramaniladari trade unions highlighted that numerous issues have arisen concerning promotions of Gramaniladari officers and emphasized the need for having a revised service constitution to address these problems. In response, Mr. Sagla Ratnayaka stated that constructive proposals should be made regarding the drafted service constitution currently awaiting approval from the Public Service Commission. He also noted the importance of having a formal service constitution for the Gramanildari service, which has been in existence for 61 years and plays a crucial role at the rural level. Prime Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana has confirmed that the presidential election will be held in accordance with the constitution and on the date specified by the Elections Commission. He made these comments while responding to questions from journalists after attending the opening of the Marty Vikramasinghe Hall of Life section at the National Library and Documentary Services Board today. The government's stand on the election has already been announced. The Elections Commission declared that the presidential election can be held according to the Constitution. They have announced that it should be scheduled between the months of September and October. The government has also announced, he said, replying to a question on allegations that the government is trying to postpone the election after seeing the crowd for its May Day, the Premier said, no political decision will be taken after seeing a crowd. We will not be panicked or reversed, but we will move forward. He added, the steps have been taken according to the accepted election law for the development of the country by advancing the supreme parliamentary system and for people's mandate. There is a two-thirds system that is very difficult to be followed to change the election rules. Otherwise, the parliament can go on until next August. If it's necessary, it can be dissolved earlier or they can dissolve it by themselves. There is a system in the constitution to do so. This is the news from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. And we continue with more local news. A six-member delegation from Singapore's Immigration and Checkpoints Authority is on a week's-long visit to Sri Lanka. The delegation arrived in Sri Lanka following a request by the Minister of Public Securities, Tirana Alas, to the Minister of Law of Singapore, K. Shanmugam. The ministry said that the purpose of the visit is to enhance cooperation and upgrade Sri Lanka's immigration system to align with Singapore's standards, integrated and advanced technology. This initiative aims to modernize all immigration, visa and citizenship processes in Sri Lanka. After conducting a comprehensive study of the airports and immigration department's operations, Minister Alice requested a detailed report on the measures to elevate Sri Lanka's system to Singapore's standard. 
The ministry said that the delegation assured that the report will be submitted within a month. Labor and Foreign Employment Minister Manu Shanarekar announced that the cabinet has approved a proposal to provide social security benefits to all workers aged 55 and above across various industries. This initiative includes the preparation of necessary legal provisions which will be developed alongside the Garusaru program. Addressing the press briefing titled Collective Path to Stable Country held at the Presidential Media Centre yesterday, Minister Nadekar highlighted the government's commitment to social security and labour rights. The minister further responded to criticisms about the lack of better freedom to celebrate festivals, noting that the current government, led by President Ronald Vikram Singer, has restored the environment for celebrating Vesak, Poson, Esela and Christmas. He challenged critics to present a proper economic plan, emphasizing that the government is actively implementing programs like Aswasaba and Urubaya to provide relief to the people. Minister Radekara also highlighted the significant economic and legal reforms under President Vikramasinghe's leadership, such as reducing the bank interest rates from around 25% to between 12-8%, to 8%, amending the Anti-Corruption Act, the Election Expenses Regulation Act, and the Assets and Liabilities Act, and introducing bills on economic transformation and public finance management. And to conclude the local news, the headlines once again. The President calls for a long-term plan to advance Sri Lanka's energy sector transformation. Singaporean team in Colombo to study immigration systems in Sri Lanka. The Prime Minister issues a clarification on the presidential election. The government focuses on addressing issues faced by the Grammar Inadari officers. Social security benefit introduced for all workers over the age of 55. 2023 advanced level examination results to be released before Monday. All schools to function as normal in the next two days. And that was the local news. The main news story is brought to you by Siddha Lepa Vedamahatma. The main news story for tonight, Education Minister Dr. Susi Premajad said that necessary arrangements will be made to release the results of the 2023 GC Advanced Level Examination before next Monday. Responding to an inquiry made by media, the minister stated that the necessary work to release the examination results are currently being carried out by the examinations department. The 2023 GC Advanced Level Examination was held from January 4th to the 31st, 2024, with a total of 346,000 976 applicants sitting for the examination of these 281,445 were school applicants and 65,531 were private applicants. And that was the main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddha Lepa Vedamahatma. At a watch like tonight, the Ministry of Education informs that all government schools will function as normal tomorrow and the day after. The Education Minister requests the general public not to get misled by wrong information and some social media reports. And that came to you in Watch Light. Coming up, World News. Headlines of the World News, Japanese Prime Minister Kishida meets senior Chinese Communist Party diplomatic official. North Korea sending balloons carrying trash to South Korea. Foreign aid heading to Papua New Guinea following the landslide. Those are the headlines and now let's move on to the details of the World News. Japanese Prime Minister Kishida Fumio has met with a high-ranking official of the Chinese Communist Party. Kishida expressed his desire to make progress towards resolving pending issues and concerns through dialogue. Kishida received a courtesy call by Liu Jiaho, the head of the International Department of the Chinese Communist Party's Central Committee on Wednesday. The South Korean military says North Korea has flown large numbers of balloons carrying objects, including trash and waste, into South Korea. The move appeared to be in retaliation against South Korea's activists, sending balloons with anti Pyongyang leaflets and the other way. The South's Joint Chief of Staff said on Wednesday that the North has been flying the balloons towards South since Tuesday night. They said some of the balloons have been found in Seoul and areas closer to the border with North Korea. 
Papua New Guinea has put out a call to the neighboring countries for assistance in dealing with the last Friday's deadly landslide. An Australian disaster assistance response team has been dispatched to the country to help with the rescue and recovery efforts. Canberra says it is providing more than one and a half million dollars as humanitarian aid. And that was the World News. Development News. For centuries, Sri Lanka has been popular with foreign travellers, says Forbes, a globally highly reduced service in a review on tourism in Sri Lanka. Around 300 BC, at the time of Alexander the Great, the ancient Greeks called the island as Palace Mandu, meaning beyond the sea, and wrote of his mystical treasures. Chinese Buddhist monk Fahi had visited Sri Lanka around 480 and liked it so much that he stayed here for two years. In the 12th century, Italian explorer Marco Polo declared Sri Lanka as the best of the island of its size in the world. In 1896, Mark Twain wrote, Dear me, it is beautiful, oriental charm and mystery and tropical deliciousness. And that was the development news. Moving on with sports news. Sri Lankan boys are an IT team created history today to take the gold medal at the South Asian Youth Table Tennis Championship held at the Municipal Indo Stadium in Kandy yesterday. Sri Lanka under 90 boys team comprised of Saifullah Akram from Trinity College, Janita Badugendra from Royal, Viduka Gunavardhana from Royal, and Diran Harbour from Royal, Saluka Premachandra from Ananda, coached by Hazata Samaravira. According to a senior official of the Table Tennis Association of Sri Lanka, earlier in the year 2014, Sri Lanka boys team under 19 had this achievement, but this time the Sri Lanka boys team fought back to clinch the title. Sri Lanka under 19 team beat Nepal 3 1, the Maldives 3 0, and Pakistan 3 0. However, the match between Bangladesh and Sri Lanka was very close, and Sri Lanka lost the first two matches, but finally Sri Lanka won the game 3 2 to win the goal in great style. That was the sports news, business news coming up. Go Ekatiana, you take it, life again, change it, near me to sit in a Swahagina, the Kapuina, Habakarana. You take it, near me to sit in a friendship, Ekamina. The all new NSP Ithrumitru account, NSP I am, a plan for your dream. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Citizens Development Business Finance PLC is poised to accelerate growth, having rebounded strongly in the year 2023-24 financial year on the back of an improved macroeconomic condition. A trailblazer in the fintech adoption in Sri Lanka, CDB reported growth across its business portfolios with improvements to almost all key financial health indicators. CDB closed the financial year 2023-24, posting a 4.6 billion rupee in profit before taxes and a net profit of 2.5 billion rupees, which is a 55% growth against the year 2022-23. That is the business news. Economic news follows. Business news. Sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go Ekatiana, you take it, life again, change it, near me to sit in a Swahagina, the Kapuina, Habakarana. You take it, near me to sit in a friendship, Ekamina. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am, a plan for your dream. In economic news, Sri Lanka tourist arrivals reached the 100,000 mark on May 28, 2024, and the total arrivals are expected to touch the 900,000 mark by early July 2024. As May 26, total arrivals stood at 881,541. India was once again the main source market for Sri Lanka, with 150,857 up to May 26, while the Russian Federation was with 110,046. The United Kingdom, 78,927, and Germany, 64,957, were placed second, third, and fourth, respectively. It was also pleasing to see China moving up to the fifth place with 54,120 arrivals from the seventh slot. That was Economic News and the Weather Report to conclude. Weather Report. 
And finally, the weather report, the Betty Papad says the prevailing showery and windy conditions over the island are expected to continue further due to the active southwest monsoonal condition. Showers will occur at times in the western, Samarakamua, central, northwestern and southern provinces. Fairly heavy showers above 35 mm are likely at some places in the western and Samarakamua provinces and in the Nuara Elia district. Showers or thunder showers will occur at a few places in the Uwa province and in the Appara and Batikula districts in the evening or night. This weather report was published this evening at 7.30 p.m. Further details could be obtained by visiting the official website of the department. And before we conclude this bulletin, let's get back to the headlines once again. The President calls for a long-term plan to advance Sri Lanka's energy sector transformation. Singaporean team in Colombo to study immigration system in Sri Lanka. The Prime Minister issues clarification on the presidential election. The government focuses on addressing issues faced by the Grama Niladari officers. Social security benefit introduced for all workers over the age of 55. 2023 advanced level examination results to be released before Monday. All schools to function as normal in the next two days. In news overseas, North Korea sending balloons carrying trash to South Korea. And in sports news, Sri Lanka under 90 table tennis team creates history with a gold. And with that, we conclude this bulletin of news. Now it's back to your evening host, Victor Raj, who is sitting in today to keep you entertained.